now we are going to talk to uh, John Mattis. He's the investigative guy. In fact, his website is investigativeguy.com. Uh, he's a old school investigative reporter who finds out what's going on in the country. He uh, looked into mortgage modification. Now, this sounds like a good thing, right? A lot of people got mortgage problems, so they're going to go modify their mortgages and they're going to be back on their feet. John, uh, welcome back to the Young Turks. Thank you. And I want to ask you, is that how it turned out? Is that are these uh, some of these mortgage modification programs uh, helping people or not necessarily? Well, let's look at the big picture. The Obama program to help people, they said they were going to get a million, a couple million people back in their homes. Only a couple hundred thousand received the benefit of the so-called Obama housing modification program. Now, in the interim, we've had millions, and I say the word plural, millions losing their homes. Uh, July 15, 2010, Realty Track reports 1.9 million foreclosure filings in the first six months of 2010. That's a national crisis. Now, what has happened with this crisis, and this has been ongoing for the last three years, millions of people losing their homes. People are desperate. They will do anything to save their home. So when Obama says, call the Hope Helpline, well, people look on the web and they find mortgage modification, and they click on the first place they go, and someone answers the phone and says, hi, this is the Obama modification program. Yes, we'll help you. Send us $3,000. Tens of thousands of people in the last several years have done that, only to be defrauded, only to have their identities potentially compromised. But most egregious of all, all of them have then potentially lost their homes because what a scammer does is once he takes your $3,000 and you give him all your loan documents, he says, don't call your bank. So even if your lender is calling you, you don't call your lender back. You leave it to the boiler room scammer to take care of it. He, meantime, pockets your money. And after a few months, he shuts down shop, closes his operation, and you lose your home. So in order to steal $3,000 from you, he facilitates the loss of your home. Now, this has been a crime spree that's been going on across America in the last several years, unabated, really unabated, because it's the perfect crime, because your victims are paralyzed, they're poor, they're out on the street, and the last thing they're going to worry about is actually getting justice. So you have the perfect storm for creating the perfect con going on in America, and that's what I've been tracking for the last year. John, yeah, tell me specifically about the ones that you covered in uh, Southern California. Well, <laughs> the ones, okay, the ones, and I can say this quite frankly, run by convicted felons. And it's just not, you know, I didn't pick one out of the blue and said, is there a convicted felon here? That's just the kind of people that get into these operations. They've been running mortgage refinances, debt consolidate, whatever they can sell on the Internet and they open up an internet site and they literally do internet TV ads or they buy late night TV ads, the infomercials you see, don't lose your home to foreclosure, call us now. They then set up shop, they have phone operators calling all over the United States, taking in calls and taking in money. Now, some of them, and I say some of them, will actually call your lender and some of them might actually get your lender on the line once or twice but the majority are just there to take your money. Now, after four or five months, of course, they're going to get a bad name with the Better Business Bureau. They're going to be listed on ripoff report in a number of consumer websites. So what do they do? They shut down their website and change their name the next day. The ones that I've been looking at, and one of a nationwide scam based here in Southern California I looked at for last year, they changed their name four times in one year. They were ordered closed by the state, and the state goes through civil filings to order them shut, and they merely shred their papers and create a new name and have a new website the next day. So the crime sprees have continued. Now, the one actually that I tracked and passed on the consumer information to a number of investigative agencies, that place was raided, and those people are facing a grand jury and a potential indictment. But in looking at that one particular one case, thousands of people victimized. 
and thousands of people giving $3,000 and now potentially losing their homes. So what happens is when the FBI raids these places, they then shut down, so homeowners are left with knowing that they've been scammed but not having any avenue to turn to. The Justice Department isn't going to call up their bank and say, hey, guess what, we have a victim here, don't foreclose them. So what we have is a continuing cycle of people being victimized by these scammers, and then the ones that are busted by law enforcement, well, then those people, no, no one's going to bail them out. Add to that, back in 06, I was investigating a mortgage fraud kingpin who attempted to kill me on camera. Well, he went to jail, and of course, what did he do after he came out of jail? He started a mortgage modification business. Now, I'm happy to say on Friday he was rearrested for elderly theft, stealing from two elderly people, the long list of victims of him. But, I mean, this goes on all over America. Now, uh, if you go to John's website, investigativeguy.com, you'll see it all on video. You'll see his earlier investigations. you see them later getting busted, uh, partly uh, based on the information that John turned in on them. And that guy that he's talking about, yeah, he literally should go beats the living hell out of John on camera. And what I'm amazed by is how little he cared that he was on camera. And it was, it was a crazy scene. But, but, John, everybody listening who has a mortgage now is wondering, okay, 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 but how do I know which ones are real and which ones aren't real? Should I not do mortgage modification at all, or, or where do I go? Excellent question. First off, in California... 30% of homes are underwater. So whether you're paying your mortgage or not, your mortgage is more than your home is worth. So you're going to face that ethical question of why should I pay more for a home that, that down the street is worth, you know, a home is $200,000 less than mine. In Nevada, the statistic is almost 50% of the homes are underwater. So millions of Americans are facing the question, what do I do? First, you have to look and say, am I underwater? Am I going to be in this home for 20 years. If you're going to be in the home 20 years, then you need to fight for a modification. If you're not going to be there, maybe you need to turn to your bank and say, I got to get out of here. I'm underwater, and guess what? I'm never going to get ahead on this mortgage. Let me go. Now, if you're going to fight for a modification, go to the government websites, anything with gov in the background. Go to your nonprofit agencies, your housing agencies in your local municipalities. Go there. Never, ever, ever give anyone an advance fee to do a modification. In, most, in a number of states, it's illegal, but they still do it. Here in California, they're prohibited from doing it, but they do it. So the web is full of quick fixes. And if anyone calls you on the phone and says they're from the Obama administration, going to help you out, uh, turn them in, because they are just criminals preying on the desperate people all over America. So... My advice is don't spend a dime. Go to the nonprofits out there that, number one, know your chances. Remember, if you walk into a nonprofit, a housing group, they're in cities all over America, they're going to tell you your honest odds of getting a, for, a foreclosure relief. They're going to tell you, gee, your principal is, is so much that there's no way we can get you a modification. And now we turn to the banks. The banks got to bail out. The banks all got their ride from the American taxpayers, and according to all the statistics and all the testimony in Congress, they have not lifted a finger. Modifications are still difficult. Our short sales are still difficult to get, but it takes someone very determined, very persistent. So if you believe you're going to be in your home, don't give up. Go to a nonprofit and fight to survive. Uh, all right, there's the real honest truth from John Mattis. Uh, his website is investigativeguy.com, and he's keeping it real with you. John, thanks so much for uh, coming and sharing that information with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you.